Hi sewing friends, my name is Karina and this is my channel called Lifting Pins and Needles and it's all about sewing and being creative and hacking patterns and all, all sorts of things. So if you haven't yet subscribed, you can scroll back and have a look at my uh, videos. I have like, I've lost count, more than a hundred here already in a year. So yeah, this vlog is all about a dress that I had really wanted to make. Um, and it's the Turner dress by Cashmeret patterns. Now, I mean, I've been hearing people rave about this for ages. And if you're a C cup or above, uh, definitely this is a dress for you. <laughs> so um, I chose, looking at the size charts and everything, um, I chose to cut a size 12 at the bust and then grade out to a 14 to the waist. And then because the skirt pieces are cut separately, I cut those in a 14. So. Um, when you're looking at garments that are designed for knit fabrics, this uh, wants you to make it out of a stable knit, you know, not a really thin, flimsy one, you know. Um, there are also finished garment measurements, but because this is knit and there's negative ease, you will see that the finished garment measurements are smaller than you. <laughs> So uh, my body measurement on the bust for a size 12 was 102 centimeters, which is about my bust circumference. Um, but then if I looked at the finished garment measurements for the bust at the size 12, it was 90 centimeters. So you could think, oh, this is so tiny. And actually when you're cutting the pattern pieces out, they look so tiny. <laughs> but just uh, trust the drafting process that it's done um, accurately and it's going to fit you because it is, you know. So, um, cashmere designs for uh, cup C up to F, I believe. So in this pattern, there was a bodice for um, cup C and D together. So that's the one I chose. Um, I used less fabric than what was recommended in the pattern because it's what I had available. Um, when I plan to make a dress, I always buy one and a half meters because I never have a definite plan for fabric. So. This particular fabric I bought in Bolivia maybe two years ago and I just bought a, a meter and a half. So I had to make the dress fit into that and it's fine. I have a seam at the back of the skirt that is not meant to be there, but you know, <laughs> if that's going to save me over a meter of fabric, I will put a seam there gladly. One thing that I really liked about this pattern was that in the instructions, it tells you to cut a lining fabric for the bodice. <clears throat> And that is a very smart thing to do. Um, lining a bodice always gives you a better finish. It finishes the neckline better. Um, so other, other dresses that are designed for knits usually have you do like bands or just like fold it in. And you know, like, yeah, doesn't give a good finish. I think this way gives a really good finish at the neckline and makes that V perfect. Now, um, the way in the instructions that they line the dress is different because this dress has to um, have sleeves like they don't have a sleeveless version of it on the pattern but i do sleeveless because of you know my weather context <laughs> i could not wear a sleeve so um, i line my bodice different and um, <clears throat> you're gonna see that process now because i filmed everything now it wasn't hard it didn't take me a long time the understitching was maybe what took me the longest, but hey, um, I filmed the whole thing of me understitching the neckline and it was about three minutes of sewing, like dig, 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 which can, it's not a long time to invest doing an understitch on that neckline to have a finish that's going to be top notch, you know? So yeah, have a look at all the process and then I'll be right back. Here I'm showing you all my pattern pieces already cut out. Now this fabric is really good, it's non-directional. You can see on the back skirt there is going to be a seam that I place right on the selvage so I don't need to finish that edge. Um, the front skirt is cut on the fold of course. Now I don't mind having a seam at the back ever. If that is going to save me a meter of fabric, go for it. Um, the print is non-directional so I can place some you know, one up, one up, one down, and that saves a lot of fabric too. So I will never doubt that. Then I, I was able to cut two bodices of each because I want to self-line. So I've got, you know, two backs and two fronts. Um, that's a front, 
there's the front bodice, there's the back and there is the back bodice lining that is also going to have a little seam that no one's going to see. So first step here, uh, like any project that is going to be lined, is to sew up the, the shoulder seams on both the main bodice and the lining that are exactly the same. Then I've placed them on top of each other, right sides together, and I'm going to sew that neckline. Um, I've pinned it and then I go to my sewing machine and start sewing. Uh, with this type of fabric you just take your time and um, especially for me when I get almost to the V of that neckline I sew so slow and then when I'm almost there I actually do a few hand wheeling stitches to make it really really accurate. You can see how slow I'm going there. So you can see me pivot, compare my seam allowance to the metal plate and think, no, uh, I need to do one more to make it perfect. So um, the V neckline on any piece is so visible. If it's a little bit wonky or off center, it's going to be noticeable. So I take my time to get it to look right, you know. Um, so that's what I'm showing you here. Um, don't rush these parts. There's no point in rushing them. There I go. See how it turned out really nice and accurate. And then I've done all the snips to make the turning around easier. Now I'm doing under stitching. Now under stitching on a knit fabric can be a bit hard. It can be slow. Um, under stitching this whole neckline took me about four minutes that I'm not showing you here of course but I did manage to get it done then to enclose the sleeveless you know armhole I'm doing that burrito method style or clean sleeve uh, or clean sleeveless bodice lining so I'm putting everything in there sandwiched between the two arm size and then um, I'm going to uh, sew that arm side closed. There you can see I've sewn it and I do all the snipping to help it turn the curves. That's, a, that's something you do with any arm, arm hole anyways. Then you, when you've uh, finished this, those snips you turn it around so you pull it all from the inside and you have a really nice closed in um, arm, arm side you know it's all finished so I have to under stitch that arm side as well or else it, you know you can have the lining peeping out so you have to do it in two steps you start from one edge from one um, side and go up to the shoulder as far as the sewing machine is going to let you because there's not enough space there at the shoulder seam so it usually takes me about three centimeters before the shoulder seam and then I just don't have any more space to keep going. So I do as much as I can and then I have to uh, stop sewing, reinforce that, that stitch and then go over to the other side. So sometimes when I'm done and I'm looking at the under stitching, there's about a four cent maybe three to four centimeter gap right at the shoulder seam that wasn't able to be understitched and um, I just try and press that really well so it doesn't peep out when I'm you know wearing the garment this is how I do it all the time there you can see me going uh, from the other extreme of the side seam towards the shoulder then I do my other side, that is my other arm side, I've got everything in there, I've already done the snips. So the bodice is sort of inside and then you pull it out. And then magically you have a fully lined bodice that encloses the neckline and both arm size and it looks really neat, very tidy, looks very well finished and I like how it looks for wovens and for knits. I like doing it with both, especially stable knits. You know, this is this is really good for stable knits. You can see the V line there looks really nice. And I'm making a close up of the under stitching uh, that's going to hold everything inside. So 
yeah, there's just understitching everywhere. This is what took the longest out of the whole dress. Now I'm putting the side seams together and I have to sew those. Uh, that's very fast, very easy. Press them open and then you have a fully lined bodice that just needs a skirt on. Here you can see that the back of the bodice is shorter than the front and that accounts for the, the, the C cup. Uh, the difference, you know, from your front on the back and the sway back is already done. So this is very clever. This is drafted very well. You're not going to have a waistline that pulls at the front as, as happens with normal patterns that are not drafted for the C and the D cups or, or above. So that curve there is really, really smart. Cool, so I hope that was really easy to do. The process is exactly the same as another video filmed in the past where I lined um, a bodice of a woven dress, uh, linen, and it's just a clean, finished, sleeveless bodice lining, basically. So I will link that down below if you wanna go and have a look at that. The process is exactly the same with this one. And the only tricky bit is doing the understitching on here, uh, on, on this side, on the arm size, because you have to start on one side and stitch until your machine has space for you, stop, and then start on the other side and go up, up to there. So actually on the shoulder seam, there's like three centimeters that don't have understitching because there's just no physical space for you to be able to do that, but it's fine, you know. <laughs> um, I think it's well worth it to keep your lining tucked in and not have it peeking out. And I mean, that happens in wovens and in knits if you decide to line it the way I did. Anyway, here is my finished dress. I love this fabric. It's When I bought it, they said it was a waffle knit, whatever, but it looks like a Liverpool knit. Um, it's got some texture on it. It's textured and it's white on the other side. Anyway, here you can't even see anything because <laughs> it's lined with the same fabric inside, you know? I was really careful to not have these flowers uh, hit me at, at my bust, apex. So when I placed the fabric there, I was like, yeah, no, my bust, yeah. I didn't want to have like annoying flowers in the wrong places. So um, you can't see the understitching because, yeah, you can't see it. But in the close-ups of the process, you would have seen how it turned out and I'm really happy I did it. Um, I'm gonna turn it around um, and show you uh, something I did. So when I turn, I, I completely tr I trusted the drafting process, right? So I, I thought, yeah, it's a knit, it's gonna fit, whatever. I went ahead, sewed it up. I even did this, um, the hem, <laughs> then I tried it on and I figured out the bodice was a tad short for me. And I am short-waisted, like, I always have to like fix a waist and when I draft for myself I know exactly that what the what the length of my waist is but I didn't bother to measure my measurements against the pattern because I thought oh, well it's a knit you know it'll fit anyway I think I needed an extra centimeter at the waist so what I did here was leave close to no seam allowance <laughs> I'm gonna show you Look at the overlocking there and where I sewed the stitch line there for the waist. It's uh, tiny, 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 but you know, oh well. I know for the next time I make this dress that um, I need to lengthen the bodice by one centimeter. And that is a minor adjustment. Now, I don't know the height of the woman that Kashmir uh, drafts for. I don't know. Um, I'm five foot eight. Maybe I'm just a bit taller than, that, than the, what they draft for, I don't know. But I know now, um, I have the Appleton dress as well, wrap dress, I'm gonna have to double check that waist height when I make that dress. So I've got it up here, cashmere patterns, check the waist that the bodice length is okay for me, okay? So that's how it looks on the inside, you see the, the bodice is, you know, self-lined in the same fabric. And um, I've just overlocked the sides there. Here is that seam I put on the back and I don't mind it being there. This is actually the selvage, so I didn't need to finish that. <laughs> you know, I think this dress is really flattering. Um, it's the perfect V-line. I mean, 
v-neckline it's the perfect fit for me i love the way where it hits it doesn't show anything but it shows enough chest for it to be flattering for a fuller bust and i think i think they considered this and i love that they did because most patterns um, although they have a very wide size range, it's from size 0 to 22, the neckline is up here and that does not suit a large bust. It just makes it look even bigger, you know? So even though some styles are drafted in wide size ranges, I think for me at least, I always make sure that the style is going to suit my fuller bust or not. And that's why I end up lowering every single neckline, I'm scooping them down, I'm always altering them, but this one is perfection perfection in a neckline so this is going to soon become my knit block bodice <laughs> so i'm going to treasure this pattern i'm going to make this bodice again and do hugs to it change the skirt but um this is going to be my go-to knit bodice for now on <laughs> because i really really liked it anyhow have a look at all the pictures i took outside and then i'll be back to say goodbye cool so i hope you make this dress if it's a style that you like um i'm sure a bee cup can fit in here you know <laughs> Um, I really loved it and I hope you enjoyed this video. Anyhow, the next video is going to be about the, um, a pair of shorts I made out of denim and they are the Irish shorts by Colette Patterns. And if you haven't subscribed, you can hit the notification button, that little bell thingy there right away. That way you know exactly when I upload my next video. Anyway, that's all for now. Have fun sewing. Bye!